I'm Dr. Kingori, and this being our very first episode, I have to start on a high note. So, hi guys. <laughs> you see what I did there? We have a great show for you, a very interesting guest coming up shortly. I also managed to get Kenyan Jew, the reporter, as a correspondent on the show. But before we get to that, the focus of tonight's show is the Kenya police. Your work will sometimes be difficult. It will also sometimes be dangerous. <laughs> I long for the times when people used to respect the police officer, that a police officer could just raise their hand and stop a car. Here, a police officer has to reach out to your brakes and your simamisha gari. It means there is a problem. Now, uh, let's understand who the police are. The English Dictionary defines the police as the civil force of a state responsible for the prevention and detection of crime and the maintenance of public order. In Kenya, however, we tend to define the police based on perceptions and experiences. We could use English, but... Uh... The driver of the KBH 453A, the DD 9662, was banned to recognition. <laughs> That's not to mean that all Kenyan cops can't speak proper English, no. Before I deliver the speech, we face a devastating combination of rising combination for resources. This feels that you already went. I am like a crocodile in the water. You see, that's, that's, that's some good English right there, but there's a language you can hear in the background. The, the English is coming out, but there's another language that just can't let go. Make me have to hear. Here's a New York call. conference at Mabasa, nostalgically. I feel proud. And see, maybe that's why not all officers are allowed to speak for the police. And on that note, let's get to hear the definition of the police according to an officer chosen to speak for them. I, I want to take you through what it means to be a policeman. There's a difference between me and you. Uh, I would call you ordinarily <coughs> Raya. There's a difference for that because I'm trained to work in, under certain conditions. This is not an ordinary job. That is the police spokesman, Charles Owino, and in, his, in this interview, he was responding to reports of police living in deplorable conditions. And uh, according to him, the officers were actually lucky to be living like this. This is because officers are not ordinary people, which could mean that if you are an ordinary person living like this, you could be a police officer. <laughs> and that, that, would further, that would further explain why a young man from the slums would, would introduce you to his friends as a uh, Hili Jeshi Yangu. It's uh, something that comes to that. And uh, that's, however, besides the point. That's besides the point. The police are more often referred to as officers of the law. But there seems to be a difference between the law that some officers follow and the law as we ordinary Kenyans know it. Like, why would you arrest someone because they are walking at night? Is it my fault that the sun has gone down? <laughs> See, according to some officers, the only people who should roam the night are thugs, prostitutes, and themselves. So technically, if you don't belong to any of these job groups, please don't walk at night. If you really must walk at night, here's a tip. If you encounter these type of officers, just introduce yourself as a thief. Like, mimi ni muizi afandi. And you will walk scot-free because, yes, you walk scot-free because you'll definitely be doing the wrong thing at the right time. As ridiculous as this sounds, uh, this perception is so ingrained in us that uh, to the extent that it almost feels right to be robbed at night. That's why when someone gets robbed during the day, they don't complain about what has been stolen. They complain about the time of the day it happened. <laughs> like, hey, ujinga sana. Wana nibi ya mchana. <laughs> As opposed to what? Yeah? As opposed to what? And uh, even our officers themselves are sometimes affected by this perception. On Saturday, the 24th of September, a motorist reported a carjacking attempt to officers manning a roadblock on Kiambu Road. And their response was that it's very dangerous to drive on that route past 11 p.m. Why are they there in the first place? <laughs> Just put a signpost reading this road is on curfew past 11 p.m. <laughs> and uh, pass that, pass you, but to me, Barabara at your own risk after 11 p.m. And uh, after all, uh, as a responsible citizen who has survived a carjacking, Hmm? What business do you have reporting to the police officer? You have done your part. You have survived. What, <laughs> what do you want them to do? What do you want? You want you to go and set up a firing squad at Uhuru Park so that people can be happy? Hey, what do you want them to do? <laughs> what? And such instances are the genesis of the bad impression the public has of police officers. But how did you get here in the first place? We need to understand. And to understand this, we must uh, start from where it, it all begins. And that is the recruitment process. 
the police recruitment process is one of the activities that attract more people than those political prayer rallies and uh, that single ladies prayer conference where half of the ladies were married and the other half were in complicated relationships. <laughs> Kenyans show up for the police recruitment in their hundreds of thousands. And that's not the interesting bit. The drama is in the elimination methods, which is understandable because if you are asked to pick three people from a crowd of 100,000, you'll definitely have to come up with ridiculous elimination techniques. Why is it that the only way a short man can be a police officer is through a television program? Why? <laughs> why, why, why? Who, how does it happen? And here's another ridiculous one. If this guy was applying for a job in a leading, in, uh, in a leading airline or a... Uh, uh, where else do we need uh, white teeth, ama men, or zote complete all your 32 teeth? We would understand why he was rejected. Or if he was auditioning for a role in a toothpaste commercial, one would get it. <laughs> but you don't need white teeth to respond to a shootout or arrest criminals. You cannot do that. You cannot do that. It's unacceptable. Now, all these requirements, as flimsy as they are, as they are, are just okay. But they should, whether they should be the basis upon which the whole force is grounded is another question. Take this recent recruitment clip, for example. Once it has manifested on the teeth, then uh, the defects on your bones, your bones are weak, you will be prone to fractures, the terrain will be vigorous. Yes, it's true that huge amounts of fluoride can take a toll on your bones and joints. But nevertheless, there are other things that may cause discoloration of the teeth, like not brushing your teeth, for example. That shouldn't deny you an opportunity to serve your country. It's easy to disqualify a real true Kenyan and pass off another who could have a beautiful set of white teeth, but all the weakest bones in the world. <laughs> How did he get in? <laughs> How did he get in? How? Amali wa fichia white. Uh, the recruitment process finally gives us tall, 32 white teeth recruits who are taken through nine months of training, after which they pass out. <laughs> but after the nine months of training that our officers go through, it's very difficult to understand why we still have such characters in the Karemi police Karemi says in all that commotion, she realized the two ladies who went into the matatu with her were non-responsive. She reported the matter at Kilimani police station. When I told him the story, the first thing he asked me was, like he didn't even seem moved, first of all. So the first thing he told, asked me was, are you related to them? I was like, no. Do you know them? I'm like, no. Shauriao. What do you mean, Shauriao? <laughs> you want to tell me that I may now need to introduce myself in a matatu just to be safe? Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Kingori, Instagram, Twitter. Please, let's take a selfie. Tafadali. Just in case something happens, mtu wa siseme hapa ati anijui. In that case, extend, in that case, extend nyumbakumi to matatus. And see, watching that lady describe her ordeal makes you think that all police officers are like that. But no. Jabu ambalo niliona limeguza mpaka askari wa traffic. Akatoa mia yake hivi, akanipatia. Kuniona tu kwa barabara. Akaniuliza mwana umenini. Nikamambia vila ilienda. Alirudi kwa mfuko wake, akanipea mia. You see how bad apples spoil the whole basket? <laughs> the good deeds by officers are shadowed by the bad. Yani, hata polisi haezi kufanyia kitu mzuri. Kitu mzuri lazima isadikwe na ubaya ingine kando. Why do we do that? Why do we do that? Sababu wale watu wanaonekanaga kama ni watu wabao. Ni watu, yani, walafi kabisa. Lakini ye mwenyewe, anaguzo mpaka na toy zile pesa. Ambazo pegini hata kama ameshukua murungura ama amefanya na lote zile amefanya. You can't give a police officer a compliment, Rosafi, watch a yende, even like You can't do that. Now, we have no idea what goes on in police training, but we can get a clue from this footage from some of our police officers in an operation. Now, what you see here is an intelligent hiding technique. The concept, in the concept of hiding, uh, if you want to hide something, just put it in plain sight. Kuna mtu anaona huyo polisi? I can't see him. I can't see him. If you, if you can see him, then you have a problem. And uh, look at this too. <laughs> now, 
Now, let's break down this dress code. <laughs> this is a shootout, but you cannot afford a bulletproof vest for everyone. And in such a case, you need all the courage that you can get. So, easy makabuti wa meva ndi wa singie baridi. Moving on. I bet you did not see that. This is an officer at a shootout, but it looks like it is the first time he's hearing a gunshot. <laughs> expecting? <laughs> Did you train with a silencer or a toy gun? <laughs> and that's not all that went wrong in that operation. Have a look at this other police officer in action. Keep in mind, he's fully trained and licensed to shoot. What did this guy hope to hit? That's a very good question because whatever it was, he stood a better chance by throwing the bullets with his hands. Like, you don't, you don't have to even have undergone any training to shoot like this. With that, with that and many other blunders, there was obviously a need to make all this better. We must thank the genius who finally thought it was about time to reform the police from a force to a service. So the National Police Service was formed, bringing together under one roof the AP, that's the Administration Police, the Kenya Police, and the DCI, which is formerly the uh, CID. You see what they did there? They brought the D all the way to the front. And uh, <laughs> the Internal Affairs, all under one command, the IG to change the image of the police, which is basically what IG is all about, a good image. <laughs> the central part of the police reforms uh, <clears throat> was the vetting process, which came with its own basket of revelations. I couldn't say I've never taken, uh, but, uh, sir, you know, a bribe, uh, the, the specification of a bribe uh, in, uh, according to... <laughs> I'm forgetting. Okay, if I have ever taken a bribe, sir, maybe uh, an, an, an appreciation. <laughs> now, the moral of the story here is don't eat something you don't know. Next. <laughs> I say switch off your microphone. He has refused to be vetted. The moral of the story here is that when the going gets tough, just go.